Hello, hello, hello out there. I always say Cape Cod and beyond, even though we're on the interwebs. Um, super happy to be here with filmmaker Matthew Balzer. Uh, your film is um, is winning awards at the film festivals, and uh, you um, graduated from the uh, with an MFA in directing from Columbia University, and they've just given you this honors for your script for The Catch. Your film is deeply moving. I, um, I, I'm touched and I'm shaken and <laughs> I feel like it's going to take a while for me to adjust to reality. It was really engrossing. I really, really appreciate it. Um, so thank you for joining us. Yeah, yeah, that's so great to hear. Thank you for the very kind introduction for the kind words on the film. Yeah, and and the, the some of the way that you wrote the dialogue is... Um, like deceptively, like I think that there's a simple, like there's some some uh, rumination that needs to happen on some of the levels. Like just for example, like with the the stepmom and some of the things that she said. And so I feel like you really expertly wove everything together. And it's hap it's playing, it's showing at the Province Sound Film Festival. June eighteenth. That's Friday, at four thirty. So anyone in Provincetown, and if you're in the surrounding areas, and you're like, "Yeah, I was thinking about popping over to the film festival. Get your tickets now, now, now." <laughs> what a great way to start the weekend and, and spend the weekend in Pizza. Yes, absolutely. And people can also um, view this virtually and buy tickets at provincetownfilm.org. So um, I would love for you to talk about the inspiration for this film. It's, it centers around a fisherman family and it's all the intergenerational turmoil and, uh, and the economy as a whole that they're part of. Sure, um, so I, I am actually, she says I'm from Watertown um, and I spent a lot of time as a kid out in the Cape, uh, out in Truro and in Provincetown. And um, you know, that sort of world interests me a lot. And, and I wrote the first uh, draft of the script while I was at film school. And at that time, it was really about these two fishermen and a territorial dispute. Um, it was based on a true life story, a shooting that had taken place up in Maine on this island called Matinicus. Um, and, you know, over time, that script, I, I put it in a drawer file and I worked on some other stuff and, and it kept sort of sticking in my mind. There was something about it. Um, that really grabbed me. And so I kept working on it uh, sort of here and there and the story started to shift and it really became about a homecoming. If you're just joining us, we're talking with filmmaker Matthew Balzer about his film, The Catch. And it is the story of a family in full on meltdown. <laughs> That's the case. And you know, what happens I think over time is you start to change, things happen in your life, um, you know, some things happened in my own life and I started to reconnect with some family members that uh, we had mostly, basically mutually agreed to each other for a while and, and you start to grow up and that's really what this is. It's a coming of age story of, of a woman who might be a little past the point where you would expect that coming of age and that maturation to take place. Um, and it really became something much more personal for me uh, still with the background of, of that story of these two fishermen uh, you know, fighting over the same bit of sea. Yes, and that's like a very, um, I was going to say primal, but but ancient story, um, you know, fighting for pro property and rights over land and the sea. And I definitely, I, I, um, I was in a, um, a play about the Selkie story, which is, you know, you, you really get caught up in that Fisher, Fisher family lifestyle. And, you know, uh, whether it's Celtic or, you know, ancient, uh, you know, Scotland, or whether it's uh, Cape Cod or Gloucester or Maine, um, wherever you are in New England, there's this certain kind of essence of the of this lifestyle and and the feeling of being the, the kind of intensity that comes with making your living with the sea because there's just so many variables. And the way that you shot at the cinematography is beautiful because there's so much like darkness and you get you just kind of get almost as if you're going into the abyss. <laughs> really. <laughs> It's nice to hear. I do think there is something universal and, and part of it, I think, is about tradition. And, you know, you talk about in these different places, there being a tradition of people making their living off the water, you know, people making their living. Land. And, and what happens over time is things start to change and 
these days it's corporatization that starts to move in and, and some of those people start to lose uh, the freedom and autonomy that they've had. Um, and, and that was definitely something we wanted to talk about in the story and something that came out of a lot of research we did um, with real struggles that these communities are facing. And then that sort of doubles for uh, our main character, you know, there's a sort of tradition within the family that she doesn't quite fit into. And it's trying to sort of navigate, for lack of a better term, challenging waters of, you know, tradition and change, uh, both in an economic sense and in an emotional sense that I think sort of ties the film together. And one of the ways I've talked about it before is as a Western on the water. And, you know, that's a sort of classic Western theme of wide open spaces and the freedom of being, you know, in one sense, a cowboy. And that's what these guys are. They're, they're alone on the water. They're in boats instead of horses. And there's something eternal about the water and something that represents freedom. And when you talk about the way it was shot, we tried to shoot it with that idea in mind where the water, we're in these wide open, beautiful spaces and the camera's moving and it feels you know, uplifting in a certain way, even when there's some sort of more dangerous elements where it feels more exciting. And then we shot the interiors very still um, and very simply to give you that sense of sort of claustrophobia. And you get this contrast between these two spaces and between these two worlds. Um, and I think, again, that speaks to the characters and, and their motivations. Absolutely. And, you know, right off the, the bat, we know that she's an outsider because of the door to her, her father's establishment. I forget what the, the last name is, but the sons, <laughs> something. McManus, sons, yeah. And sons. It's like, yeah, it, um, it really is interesting in terms of, you know, a female in a, in a male dominated society and what she goes through because clearly she has PTSD and you use her for the flashbacks so marvelously. So without giving too much away, I would love for you to talk just about um, the experience of bringing your script to life in terms of, uh, you know, of, of directing and, and being immersed in this culture. And did you hire extras that were local and that's we did. We had a mixture of, uh, you know, hired locals and, and sort of volunteers. But we had this really wonderful experience. And I'm sorry, there's somebody cutting, <laughs> cutting the edges outside my window. So I hope you can't hear that at the moment. But um, like I said, I, I'm from Massachusetts. We had actually planned to shoot the film in Maine um, in some of the locations it was set in. And, and we, you know, did a lot of scouting up there. And I did a lot of research. I actually went out with um, some fishermen in Provincetown who were kind enough to take me out. And I went out, you know, sort of moving up the coast with some guys in Maine. Um, and what happens is those guys, you ask them to teach you how to fish. And that's what I learned to do, how to haul traps, how to set the traps, how to ban the, the claws. And they start telling you stories. Um, and some of those stories are better than the stuff that you came up with. So you might as well start to use that stuff. And, and you know, that that is invaluable. Uh, so when I was talking about that development process, what happened is we started to work in some real life um, true stories that people would tell me and, and some of those feelings about generational change. Um, and then uh, we ended up shooting the film in Massachusetts, in Gloucester and in Rockport. Um, and, you know, I wasn't exactly sure how that was going to go. Um, and it ended up really being uh, a blessing for the film because we got there, you know, I knew a couple people, those people introduced me to some others. And then, you know, we were scouting locations. I was walking down the dock one day and uh, started talking to this lobsterman and he was talking to me, he was coiling some rope into a, into a bin. And while I talked to him for about 20 minutes, he never looked down. He was tying these sort of really precise knots uh, without ever looking down. You could tell he'd been doing this for a long time. And we started chatting and I told him a little bit about what we were doing and then we're here to shoot a film. And he made a, a few jokes about us being from Hollywood, which we are, are definitely not. And uh, you know, I sort of won him over, over I think a period of time, I, he just said the first time, why don't you come again and, and we'll go out on the boat. And I went out on the boat with him and said, why don't you meet me again? And I, I just kept showing up and, you know, being honest about this we were trying to tell and how we were trying to involve the local community. And he became uh, sort of an entree into the local fisherman community. He found us boats. Um, he appears in the movie. He drove the boats for us. He showed up during, you know, night shoots in the middle of the ocean, in the middle of the night to help us navigate that stuff, taught us about you know, the wind and, and how to control for that. And he really allowed us to involve the community far beyond what we had hoped for. And, and then there were other people who started coming out. You know, we shot at a diner where they, um, you know, gave us the location for free. And so we just bought, you know, breakfast from that place. And they 
then you know introduced us to someone else and it was really uh became this network uh that we found and and that really sort of took us uh into their world and allowed us to i think tell a story that they could be proud of um by being a part of of the telling of that story yes yeah and it came off as very organic and how long did you have to shoot we had 25 days okay um, and you might notice we have a lot of locations we have a lot <laughs> of uh, <laughs> actors and you know we have a lot of scenes on the water and uh, you know it was my first feature as i mentioned and what i've learned now is it was a very ambitious i knew it was somewhat ambitious but now i can really tell you it, it was uh you know far beyond what i think um a lot of people let's say as a first feature set out to do with the resources that we really had on hand um and you know i guess not knowing how difficult it would be was one of our greatest benefits because we just went and did it and we talked to uh or mentioned about film school uh i had some friends from film school my dp uh, JP Wakayama Carey and I had a couple other friends from film school who came to be a part of it and the best part about film school is you guys are all in it together um, and you come up together and they're willing to do things and to sort of push themselves further than maybe someone you just hire was um, but the surprising part was we hired primarily local crew from Massachusetts primarily people I had never met and they were also willing to go the distance and um, you know really I think excited about the project and willing to sort of give that extra effort that you need when you're trying to do something sort of much beyond the you have to accomplish it. Yeah, being from Los Angeles originally and having lived here in Massachusetts for 10 years, I can definitely say there's something very uh, resilient and powerfully committed about the the kind of general mentality of people say on, on <laughs> in in New England, I think there's like because of like having to deal with the elements, you know, even just the act of shoveling snow in the winter and like <laughs> having to have the four seasons like it seasons a person and it makes people kind of join together. It's kind of a little more easily, I think, sometimes. <laughs> sure. And that's, you know, I grew up in a community that was like that hardworking. There's an appreciation for hard work. That's definitely the community this film takes place in and it happened to be the, the ethos of the crew, which is you don't complain, you show up, you do your job and you try to do a good job while you're there. Yeah, yeah. And so my final question before everyone goes and sees it either online uh, at provincesoundfilm.org when they become tickets become available, which is in a couple of weeks um, and or whether they see it in person. So I think the past. tickets actually just became available oh, earlier okay. Super. last week. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Oh, good, good, good. Um, and um, I just wanted to ask about being with the crew and getting to know each other in such a in such a way like and, and just um, I guess my question is more about directing and kind of how did you uh, what did you learn about the facilitation of this because it seems like it's so much because of the wanting to bring in a very real um, almost documentary kind of feel and flavor to your film and immersing yourself in the culture and understanding what you're really talking about that that kind of um, lends itself to some, in some way to like how you direct. <laughs> uh, it definitely does. And I think uh... You know, it's it's unfortunate, but using the term humility sometimes doesn't sound very humble, but that's really what it is. It's understanding what you don't know and what you can't control. And so it goes to working with the crew. It goes to working with the, the local um, sort of uh, involvement, and it really goes to working with the actors. And so what it means, I think, is you try to prepare as well as you can before you go there. You have an idea of what you're trying to accomplish and really the emotional arc within a scene and within the story but then you have to be open to what comes so we cast the film and we really lucked out to get a great group of people each of whom brought something different to their character than i had originally imagined and rather than trying to force them into whatever box i had come up with for them you let that truth that they can speak to of their own character come through um, and then the big one was you know shooting on the water the way that works is you have an idea of what you want to do and then the waves decide they want to do something different 
Uh, you're working on multiple boats that are deciding to do something different than that. And then the wind comes up and, you know, you have all of these elements that are completely out of your control. So you can either lose your mind over it or you can just let go and embrace what you get and get what you can. And like I said, stick to the emotional story and the heart of the film that you're trying to tell. And so that was both a, an amazing learning experience um, that I'll carry with me, uh, you know, I think moving on from here. That's awesome. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Matthew Balzer, for joining us talking about The Catch. Folks can check it out right away. <laughs> Please do. And, and, you know, you can find us on uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, to check out some updates on the film. We'll be playing at a few places, a couple in Massachusetts. We're actually going to Woods Hole as well. Um, and we'd love to see you guys. Um, I'm going to come and do a Q&A at the screening in Provincetown, and I'd love to see you there. Excellent. Thanks. And so the screening, uh, you're going to be at the event the, uh, 4.30, June 18th. Correct. Okay, with your Q&A. Awesome. Thank you so much, Matthew. Thank you, Pandora. It's nice to meet you. You've been listening to Healing Wisdom. I'm your host, Pandora Peoples, certified chartered herbalist and psychic medium. You can find Healing Wisdom podcasts at WOMR.org.